and it's got two toes which makes it uh, a deer is around about three centimeters long fallow deer much much larger nearly eight centimeters long When you say to people you're going to be tracking animals, they instantly think of footprints. But is that really as easy as it sounds, or is it just a tracking nightmare? Well, the truth is, it's a bit of both. So the great thing is that there are loads of guides to footprints available now. We still need to do the detective work, and we need to be able to rule out a couple of key suspects first. Let's take a look. So let's be honest, 90% of the footprints you're going to find near home or on footpaths are going to be cats and dogs. So it's really worth finding out what they look like first before you take photographs of footprints that you think are wildlife. Their tracks actually show you a lot of the features that we want to look for in other wildlife, so it's certainly not a waste of time. Let's start off by looking at the domestic moggy. So we've got our scale card in shot as well so you can see but obviously we've got four toes one two three four arranged around a pad and again here and that's the same as with a dog but you'll notice there are no claw marks with a dog the claws are always out with a cat it tends to walk around with its claws retracted and also with all cat footprints and this tends to be the same for the big cats like lions and tigers as well if you happen to have them roaming around near your garden um, the one toe is longer than the other in the middle which is quite characteristic of cats as opposed to dogs so that one toe is just a little bit longer so by comparison here's the dog footprint you can see it, it's large um, but obviously dogs come in all so sorts of shapes and sizes it also has four toes one two three four and a triangular rear pad but notice the claw marks these are really deeply impressed and you always tend to see the claws with the dog footprints and the claws are separated from the pads so they're, they're so it's as wide as it is long so it's quite a sort of square type footprint so now we need to go out and actually photograph something and it's not as straightforward as you might think photographing wildlife footprints so here are my top tips the first one is that in strong sunlight it can be really difficult to photograph footprints they either in deep shadow or the footprint gets bleached out by your camera trying to compensate so perhaps uh, get yourself in between the sun and the footprint so that the camera can cope. The second one is try to photograph your footprint from above so that you actually see the pattern and it'll look a lot more like the things that you're going to see in your book. If you photograph it from the side it may be distorted and difficult to tell what you're looking at. The one that everybody seems to forget is the scale of the footprints. You're taking a photograph often of brown blobs on a brown background. And how do you tell what size the animal is? An otter's footprint may look very similar to a weasel's footprint, but they'll be totally different scales. So if you don't have one of our photographic scale cards, which I don't expect you will, then just a two P piece or anything next to the footprint will tell you how big it is. And the final one, and the most important, is get it in focus. The number of photographs I get of out of focus brown blobs is unbelievable. So take your photograph from different heights. That may help your camera compensate for the autofocus. And just have a look before and just zoom in and check that it is definitely crisp and clear. So we're quite lucky that it's been raining recently. It makes the ground a bit softer and that's a really good time to look for footprints. And here I found one which you can see from the scale card is actually quite wide. Uh, I guess it's about seven or eight centimetres across. So that's a big print. I always think these look almost like a bear. It's got a really broad, almost rectangular foot pad at the back and then five toes there's one set back here there's another one over here and then there's these three toes along the front and they're pointing almost completely forwards this is the footprint of a badger 
and it's part of the weasel family believe it or not the, the mustelids the five toes is very much a characteristic of this family so like otters weasels polecats they all have five toes and look at these claw marks they're actually usually easier to see on a photo like this one here and at virtually the same location is another footprint which is different again and this is the fox you can see it's got four toes one two three the fourth one is actually obscured by another footprint and then there'll be a pad at the back as well you can see that there's two definite claws at the front so they're forming the sort of top of the footprint and although it's got the same number of toes as a dog it's actually narrower than it is long unlike unlike the dog footprint that I showed you before it forms a diamond shape and you can actually trace an X between the toes and the foot pad without crossing any of them which means the fox is the only British mammal with an X in its name and in its footprint so when you actually look at footprints for real they look very different to the diagrams that you get in the books but you can make it easier for yourself by actually just colouring in your photograph so you can see this example I've got here this was sent to me down by a river a possible otter but of course once I colour in the pads and the claws you can very clearly see that it's a dog footprint likewise this otter track from one of our monitoring rafts that one of our landowners had is quite clearly an otter footprint and it looks even more clear once you colour it in. So you could just do this on paper, print it out, colour it in with a sharpie or you could do it with an app or photo program on your PC, laptop or tablet. So although I said generally you can't take the footprint away with you, of course there is one way to do that and that's to create a plaster cast. Now this one was taken from one of our monitoring rafts on the River Cone and it's clearly got some otter tracks on here and some mink. So that's a possibility. A little bit of plaster of Paris, a little ring of cardboard to contain it, place it over the footprint, let it dry and then bring that footprint away with you. So as you can see it's not always straightforward for the mammal detective to work out which footprints belong to which animal but if you use all of those tips and tricks that I've shown you you will at least have a fighting chance and you'll certainly have good fun looking at your footprint photographs when you get home and trying to work out what they are. If not feel free to send them to the Wildlife Trust we'll have a go for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.